हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू द एपिसोड टू ऑफ मेडिसिन पी वाई क्यू सीरीज द एपिसोड टू विच आई हैव चूजन इज प्रोलेक्टिनोमा सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो द पी वाई क्यू विच हैव कम इन दी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू एंड ट्वेंटी एटीन विल क्विकली गो थ्रू द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट देन विल गो थ्रू द टॉपिक एंड विल गेट बैक टू क्वेश्चन अगेन सो नंबर वन क्वेश्चन विच केम इज वॉट लेवल्स ऑफ प्रोलेक्टिन आर डेफिनेटली सजेस्टिव ऑफ प्रोलेक्टिनोमा फिफ्टी हंड्रेड वन फिफ्टी एंड टू फिफ्टी माइक्रोग्राम पर लीटर सो द आंसर हियर इज मोर देन टू फिफ्टी माइक्रोग्राम पर लीटर The second question is a female patient with a negative urine pregnancy test presents to you with galactoria. They have given you a symptom, and then an MRI was done, which revealed a large pituitary tumor. If the patient is not willing for the surgery, which of the following is the best drug for treatment? So, the options are bromocriptine, promethazine, octreotide, and clozapine. So, the answer here is bromocriptine. So, first we'll quickly go through the topic, and then we'll get back to the questions so that this gets more clear. So, what is prolactinoma? It is the most common tumor of pituitary. It is a tumor secreting prolactin, leading to hyperprolactinemia. So you'll definitely get symptoms uh, related to hyperprolactinemia. It is more common in female than in male, and age preponderance is 25 to 45 years in females, and preferably late in males. Uh, it presents more with hormonal effect than the mass or the stock effect. Now coming to types of prolactinoma, it is based on the size. Uh, if it is less than one centimeter, it's called microadenoma. They are most common, uh, and they are also more common in females than males. If it is between one to four centimeter, it's called macroadenomas. It is having equal incidence in both female and male, and in the giant prolactinomas, they are more than four centimeter in size. Now this is very important clinical features, which can be a clue in the clinical stem. So the presentation symptoms would be of hyperprolactinemia. In females, they are mainly amenorrhea and ovulatory cycle, breast pain, galactoria, hirsutism, infertility, loss of libido, and oligomenorrhea. In males, it could be decrease in seminal fluid volume, galactoria, gynecomastia, impotence, and loss of libido. And certain common symptoms uh, could be delayed puberty, then uh, osteopenia or osteoporosis, and short stature. And if you see this picture, this helps you to remember the. common signs and symptoms which could be the clue in the clinical question there is a change in the menstrual flow or the infertility the vaginal dryness abnormal lactation irregular periods so these are important signs of high prolactin now the diagnosis screening test of choice is always the fasting prolactin levels which we first see and suspect there could be a prolactinoma and if the levels are more than 100 microgram per liter it is probably a tumor but if it is more than 250 microgram per liter it is definitely a tumor which was a question then confirmatory test uh, is gadolinium enhanced mri so it's a contrast enhanced mri which is a confirmatory test in the case of prolactinoma so these are certain mri images which are showing prolactinoma if you can see the arrow marks they are showing enlarged portion of pituitary gland that is the suggestive of prolactinoma and if we compare it with the normal brain anatomy you can see how the pituitary part is enlarged on the right hand side you can see the coronal section of the same showing microprolactinoma so these images are important you can get them in exams and along with a clinical clue and they might ask you the diagnosis coming to treatment first of all we should know whom to treat so all macroadenomas and symptomatic microadenomas need to be treated in asymptomatic microadenomas what we do is we repeat the mri after 6 to 8 weeks and if the size is increased we treat it the goal of the treatment is prolactin levels should be normalized the tumor size should shrink and the third one is hypogonadism must be corrected but remember first line treatment is always medical irrespective of the tumor size now the drug of choice it is oral dopaminergic agonist uh cabagolin is preferred more over bromocriptin but bromocriptin is preferred in pregnancy so this was also a question so let us go back to the question and if we see what levels of prolactin are definitely suggestive of prolactinoma so the answer now we know is more than 250 microgram per liter and the second question where the patient is not pregnant and uh, they have given signs and symptoms of hyperprolactinemia that is galactoria and an mri they have already told you that it is a large pituitary tumor and they have asked you the best drug for a treatment coming back to the topic the follow up so follow up medical treatment first we do for one month and then we repeat the serum prolactin levels if it is improving we treat it for two years generally the tumor shrinkage takes around 3 to 6 months patient generally gets better by one month symptomatically but if there is no improvement they are considered dopamine agonist intolerant or resistance and they are considered for surgery 
now we have two options one is surgery one is radiotherapy uh, so surgery is transphenoidal resection which is done and the indications for surgery are the dopamine agonist intolerant dopamine agonist resistance mass effects which is not improving uh, upon medications pregnancy with no response in one month and if there is bleeding into the pituitary there is a pituitary apoplexy so these are certain indications where we go for surgery which is transphenoidal resection but if a patient is not fit for surgery so we can also go for radiotherapy so guys i hope this video was useful and you learned a little bit about prolactinoma and a quick revision of this topic till then keep studying keep revising i'll see you in the next episode cheers